So I started as a broadcast journalist on Red Dragon Radio in Cardiff, covering sports uh, fixtures, football matches, even did a bit of patonk, which is strange for South Wales. And then basically for the past 20 years, I've been working in sports broadcasting and production. Um, so that's gone from working at PA on their multimedia department, creating audio and video, working for the Sun Online, creating audio and video there, and also here, um, I joined the company when it was in its infancy a couple of years ago, when it was growing as a part-time um, consultant, if you like, to help them get more sports brands on board, work with those sports companies. And now here I am full-time uh, doing exactly the same, but on a full-time basis. Looking after the team and looking after the people that create the content. So we've got hundreds of hours of sports audio coming into the system every day. My responsibility for us to help those people who are creating that content get the best that they can in terms of listens, um, in the way our system works, and getting um, audio boom embedded into their workflow. So difficult um, certain conversations will be about uh, meeting new customers meeting new football clubs meeting new broadcasters showing them how it works and showing them the benefits of, of using audio boom then they'll be going to events uh, like soccer X and things like that and talking to people there and then there's making sure that that brilliant content that's coming from them every day gets highlighted onto our system so managing the team here that promote that content through our own platform and our stuff can be distributed easily into iTunes and various things like Twitter so making sure that we are doing our best to promote their content as well. It's made people more accessible and on various levels so you could talk about the broadcasters social media allows them to show that they can be immediate operators and they have content of immediate worth um, whether that be audio video whatever um, the football clubs now have a direct one-to-one -one relationship or the sports clubs have a direct one-to-one -one relationship with their fans now and that could be a very powerful tool and I would urge those soccer clubs not to be afraid of using that as a tool because I think it's quite an asset and then let's talk about the talent either the players or people who are pundits you now given them an extra voice and they now have an extra brand online um, which they didn't have before they might have been reliant in the past perhaps too reliant on being with a broadcaster or being aligned to a, a sporting club now they can create their own brand and get their message across and actually get value and revenue for themselves their own social media presence. Um, they're amazing how many people have applied for jobs here at Audio Boom, and you go on to their Twitter and their Facebook page, and it's a monstrosity, to be honest with you. It's very personal. There's some, uh, some of them have got rude pictures on there. I think if you can't look after your own brand, why would an employee trust you to look after their brand? And that would be the first thing I would say to anybody who wants to work in social media. Absolutely have an opinion, have some fun on your social media profiles. But be wary that they do make you, uh, th th be wary that they are the point at which you are judged sometimes on uh, your accessibility and your suitability for a job. The other thing I would say is, if you're not seen to be active on social media, how do you know how social media works? Why do you think uh, Twitter is better than Facebook for something or Facebook is better than Twitter for something if you have uh, not many users and you're not active on these portals um, people in the same way that you would look at somebody um, uh, as an expert or, or would look at for them in expertise in anything you look to see how they have achieved in that arena you, you do the same with social media so you know when we get CVs through here the first thing we're looking at is people's Twitter handles people's Facebook profiles anything on blogs which shows they have a full understanding of this arena I think brands and holders of content will become far more powerful and when I say holders of content I mean personalities, players, I think they will become increasingly more active 
especially in sport, as people realise there's a value. I also feel that uh, organisations will become more content rich and they'll understand the true value of their content. So it will go beyond just writing a 140 character tweet now. It will be about what asset can I align to that tweet? What great picture can I add to that? What great um, audio or video can I add to that? And I think the technologies, and I have to say yes, obviously, on Audio Boom, allow the simple uh, creation of audio and the simple delivery of audio. Um, and I think that sporting organisations should really explore how they make their social space far more interactive. A passion for sport, an open mind and that knowledge about social. You really do have to be seen to me as somebody who understands how people communicate in the social media arena if you're going to work for a company like Audio Boom. Passion for sport, for me, goes beyond just supporting a Premier League soccer team. Again, a lot of candidates send their CVs and they say they're a Manchester United fan and Chelsea fan. That's brilliant. Keep on supporting those teams. But what do you know about German ice hockey? What do you know about Swiss rugby? We're a global company and every day we're working in new sports. And it is important to learn about those sports because you can't deliver the best for your client if you don't understand what that sport is about and getting the most out of them. And then a, a passion for people. So I'm looking for people here who not only understand our product, but also understand the people who they're working with. People who are very busy, who are perhaps running things on a small budget, a small team, because not every sports organization has masses of people running around with video cameras and, and audio recording machines, and, and looking to understand how we can make a benefit to their business as opposed to just thinking we should have them on board Audio Boom. listen um i think there's a lot of people who like talking i'm probably one of them in this video as it happens um but i think i've learned so much by standing back and making people feel that they have a way of talking to me or they can access they can actually talk to me uh, uh than than putting your point of view um i i think if you listen quite a lot you change what you think and your perception about how you deliver something and you deliver the perfect product for everybody then. So it's quite simply to listen. Um, I've worked with some very good sports journalists um, in broadcast and in print. I'm not going to name names because there are actually too many of them, um, but previous bosses of mine uh, at The Sun, uh, previous uh, media officers I've worked with in many football clubs, uh, they have become somebody that I've learnt off because I love watching them in action and I love some of the things uh, that they do have taught me how to sort of do my job. The Listen thing is a classic example. My, my former editor at The Sun, um, you know, he, he taught me how to listen quite a lot and there are quite a few other people in the broadcast industry who have taught me that. So... I wouldn't want to name one specific person, but if you've got a mentor, you've got somebody like that who sticks in your mind, um, learn anything that you can from them while you have them, because either you'll move on or they'll move on.